The job of a movie is to connect with an audience and make you feel something. So today's feeling is anger on Film Threat Reviews. Hi, I'm Alan Ng. I was there in a kid. And today we review The United States versus Billie Holiday, now on Hulu. It follows Billie Holiday during her career as she is targeted by the uh, Federal Department of Narcotics with an undercover sting operation led by Black federal agent Jimmy Fletcher, with whom she had a tumultuous affair. Uh, directed by Lee Daniels, stars Audra Day, Trevante Rhodes, Garrett Hudland. Yeah, this is a this is a story I never knew. I knew I know of Billie Holiday. She appears on a lot of my old jazz albums, but I never knew her story up until now. Uh, what did you think of the United States versus Billie Holiday? Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. I I didn't know any of this stuff, uh, but I have a perfectly good excuse. A, I grew up in Canada. <laughs> that wasn't part of any type of uh, Canadian history. And on top of that, Ukrainian is my first language. And I grew up in a pretty insular Ukrainian community <laughs> before even learning the English language. So this is definitely not part of so American it. jazz and blues. You, you had no uh, background in those. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, I mean, she's, she's one of the classic singers of, of yeah. that era. And uh, you know, she's, she's always in the, uh, the greatest hits compilation discs. <laughs> yes, and it's a it's a it's a name that I always see, and and I and I know on playlists like that raspy voice is very distinct. Yeah. Um, uh, but learning all of this was uh, was yeah. eye opening, and and I I. I, I was. It wasn't even enough for me. After the movie, I needed to Wikipedia everything. I needed to look up to find out more, and I wanted to go even more in depth because I was so fascinated. Yeah, this we, is like a part of the the trio: Judas and the Black Messiah, uh, MLK, uh, and FBI, FBI, uh, FBI MLK, yeah. uh, which is and documentary, we, and then this that. one. It, we we talked about that when we reviewed Judas and the Black Messiah because because. It, it it's this trio of, of of you know the shameful history of the FBI targeting people of color and and trying to shame them and and discredit them all because they feared them and uh, and you, you know you you know that this is going to be you know a combative type of film because it's called United States versus Billie Holiday. It's not like, oh, Billie Holiday sings a song yeah. or, uh, you know, the life and times of Billie Holiday. No, the, the title literally is United States versus Billie Holiday. Yeah. So, you know, something's up. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what angers me most about this movie or about the subject of the movie is that it's, it's a government vendetta against a single person over a song she wrote about, lynchings in america this, 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 is, this is the reason yeah. they, they they didn't like her because of that song and they tried to arrest her every time she sang that song and um and you know fortunately we have this thing called freedom of speech and so they had to go the capone route and find some other crime that she may be committing mm -hmm. and prosecute her that way yeah. and and it was and from the start to the f finish of her life the government was just over her shoulder. On her deathbed. On her deathbed. deathbed. Yeah, they, they, the moment she died, they, they arrested her. I mean, you know, this, this, is, this is what makes you angry about that time and, and the abuse of power that was going on uh, within, the, within the government, you know, they across the board. Even, that she didn't even write, those weren't her words. They were, uh, it, uh, when I it did my research, it was, uh, somebody else had written that, and 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 uh, uh, and it was set to music. So she didn't even write it. Um, so it the whole thing is just it's unbelievable. Um, uh, but get, getting back to you know the fact that this is a movie, the whole the whole film hinges on Audra Day, yeah. and she as Billie Holiday. I mean, th this is everything. I mean, you. It's one of those movies where, uh, one of those performances that it'll be hard to disassociate the two. Uh, you will always think of Audra Day when you think of Billie Holiday, and I yeah. and I think you know we we do have a fascination with Hollywood biopics, especially those that are done so well. I mean, Renee Zellweger was it last year that she won an Oscar? Yeah. 
portraying mm -hmm. Judy Garland, right? So, I mean, th th there is something, we have feelings for certain, uh, we have affinity or affection for certain people from, you know, past decades. And then to see someone play them and literally embody them, be it Renee Zellweger as Judy Garland or Audra Day as Billie Holiday, you, you can't help but just get all emotionally in. in yeah. I mean, she just won the Golden Globe for Best Actress, and, yeah. well, and it's like I, there's no there's no yeah. argument for me on that one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, she is exactly. she is, yeah, the heart of this movie. Uh, you know, the the um she opens uh, when when she first appears. You know, the first thing I thought was she's not that much of a likable character, and then lo and behold, they mentioned that uh, a few minutes into the film that you know I don't know you know. Um, you know, I don't think people really like her, you know, basically. But then as they as her story is expanded out throughout the entire film, you know, you just realize what a great performance this is and how nuanced it is. You know, she's not she's not the bubbly type. And well, uh, you know, she it it's it, you know, and you uh, you get the anger that she has uh as it burns her throughout the entire film. Well, it, it, exactly and and you know, when we look at the trio of films that we talked about, MLK, FBI, Judah and the Black Messiah, and, and this one here, it, they are all political. But what makes this one different is that, you know, Martin Luther King and um, the Black Panthers, you know, these were... they and Malcolm were, X for that matter, too. Was that? And Malcolm X for that matter, too. Yeah, and Malcolm X, yes, but true in uh night in miami you can add that in if you want to um you know with billy holiday her politics was that song her politics was art uh with these other ones that i mentioned politics was politics it was politics it was race it was it was it did not involve something artistic like singing in this in this case and we and and despite being a terrible drug addict like really this this is it's a warts and all type of uh, a movie here she was so fiercely stubborn and had this strong social conscience about this song that she would not stop she knew it would get her in trouble she knew they were trying to frame her she knew the lovers that she had were in with the fbi and trying to set her up I mean, everything was stacked against her if only she would be Cave, then she wouldn't lose her cabaret license. If only she would be compliant and not sing the song. But she, despite all of that, she was fiercely stubborn about the importance of having to sing it. Yeah. And 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 you just saw this aspect of this woman that that I I didn't I didn't know about. I just had no idea. Well, fortunately, the government learned its lesson, and and this never ever happened ever ever again. Yeah. This is the thing that, that just stuck in my craw the entire time was in politics, especially when you have this kind of power, and, and it occurs on both sides of the aisle. But it's this idea that when you don't like someone, when you're when you have a political opponent that you don't like, what you have to do is you have to use the power you have and go into their lives and basically dig for something that they can nail you on. Um, and for her, it was drugs. You know, they all knew that we can't get her on the song, so we're going to get her on the drugs. And this is, uh, you know, this still happens today. We don't like you, so we're going to dig into your past, dig, dig. And, and you know, and this is basically, it's a total violation of due process. You know, you've got to have a crime first before you can do an investigation. And they're doing it backwards. And, and again, boy, we learned our lesson. Yeah, Never but you know, what was also interesting was that the FBI had complete leeway to partake in oh, yeah. in doing those drugs in order to nab that person. Well, yeah, they were yeah they were planting it. They were get you know they would. That's the other thing is they would take someone close to her, um, and, and there were several that they just twisted their arm and said, "Look, you know we know a secret about you, but we'll ignore it if you just plant these drugs on her." Yeah. You know, what was also interesting to me that I, I never knew was, I mean, yes, the FBI was racist, but within their own division, their own department or their own existence, they had black FBI agents, but they were like, they were, they were separated from the white FBI agents. They were stuck in some basement uh, and they, and 
the only reason they had black FBI members was so that because they knew that white ones couldn't infiltrate in, yeah. in the black community. So they like it's like they used um, black people and and as FBI agents yeah. to infiltrate the black community. I mean, the whole thing is just so awful. Everything about this. Is well, just they also use them to show that hey, we're a diverse group. We're you know, <laughs> you know. But again, that that happened back then. It never ever happens now. Yeah. Well, it's uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. especially not. I mean, as, and I think my point is, you know, as much as things have changed, they haven't. Yeah. Uh, it, it all stays yeah. the same. And um, anger is the thing that just burned through me throughout this entire movie. It's, a, it's a timely film, even though it takes place in the forties. Unfortunately. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. I mean, the forties. The, the the war is still going on at this point. Right. I know. I know. Like I said earlier, this movie's kind of a warts and all. Like Billie Holiday is, is does not. If this was a sanctioned biopic, uh, you know, it she would not be, she would not be portrayed well. I mean, do you, we see the uh, the ugly side. We see so much ugliness, um, and, and it's not pretty. But when you look at Lee Daniels' uh, filmography, this man, he he is not pretty in what he exposes. He produced Monsters Ball. I mean, Halle Berry, as raw as raw can be. Yeah. Precious, Precious was devastating, devastating in its rawness and its and 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 and, and showing just the most horrific side of this of abuse and sexual abuse it was awful. Uh, Shadow Boxer, I mean, there was a really uncomfortable scene between Helen Mirren and Cuba Gooding Jr. having sex in the woods. It was just, it was so uncomfortable and so just not, just awkward and, and unpleasant to watch. And, and there's elements of that in this movie too. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. So this is, this is something that Lee Daniels is quite good at at doing is just really yeah. putting it out there. Almost yeah, I mean, what struck me about uh, the screenplay and the direction was that this is such a heavy handed subject, but it never felt heavy handed in its execution. Um, you know, it, it, he gets he gets the point across. He gets you to feel what you need to feel, and yet you don't feel manipulated into feeling that way. Well, you know. I, I also feel like you're right. And I think that part of that is, is that like the Judy Garland movie last year, there's a, there was a, there's a glamorous aspect to this movie, like this old Hollywood glamour of, you know, the, the yeah. gorgeous gowns and the, the jazz musicians and the, the, perf and the performances like this mm -hmm. is, this is a musical. You could call this a musical because yeah. The musical numbers are in full, and they are long, and they are gorgeously shot. Well, oh, and 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 to a callback to Rodgers and Hammerstein, there is a dream sequence that occurs mm -hmm. midway through yes. that is haunting. Oh. Uh, I mean, yeah. when at, right at the very end, I was like floored. Oh. Um, and and you know, like I said, that's it's. I don't know if it was a callback to Rodgers and Hammerstein, but you know, there's the, those surreal dance moments mm -hmm. uh, that that you know you could write it off as just a dance moment but there's such power behind it exactly so so i think those elements uh just gave, gave the movie just a different type of a feel um it, it's interesting i had to rewatch that dream sequence uh the 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 movie's playing on hulu so Luckily, you know, you, you can do that. But when I saw it the first time around, before moving on, I, I was so stunned and shattered that I just I just wanted to watch it again so I could make sure that I saw what I thought I saw. Yeah. No, I don't know that I could watch it again. It's that it's that devastating. It, it, it is, but but I did. I just needed <laughs> to make sure that I wasn't dreaming this dream sequence, you know? It was very powerful. Kudos to Lee Daniels. I, I think only someone like him could 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 bring this type of vision for this movie. Mm -hmm. To the big screen or the small right. screen, rather, actually. So, yeah. all right. So, I, I'm just gonna guess you gave it a nine and a half. I did. I did. I gave it a nine and a half. It's 100% deserving of this. It is a very important piece of history. I, I, I'm, I'm, 
ashamed that I did not know it, but mind you, I did not grow up here. So just do yourself a favor, watch this, learn and, uh, and, uh, and watch Audra Day clean up at the award shows. Really, uh, you like like you said, you 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 and I probably feel the same way. Uh, you were riveted by her performance, by by you were you were ang you were angered so much. And I think any time a movie makes you feel emotions like that, uh, then that's a sign of a powerful movie. And I think you you were. Uh, I know it's not an Avengers, but I think you probably gave it a nine. No, it is an Avengers. I'm giving it a nine and a half. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. I mean. You know, it would have solidified nine and a half had, had Chadwick Boseman in it. But, <laughs> but no, it it is a fantastic movie, and you know, you that's what you look for, and that's what I look for in in these. You know, when you hit that top echelon of nine and a half and ten, it's it's a film that makes you feel, and then makes you, and that feeling then lingers past it. And yeah. uh, it's such a well crafted movie, uh, a great performance. Yeah, no, it's it's Avengers. It's nine and a half. So all right, yeah, there we go. All right. Yeah. So let us know what you thought of the United States versus Billy Holiday. It's on Hulu. You can watch it right now. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you thought. And with that, let's get out of here.